In this video, I'm going to take you through how to actually set up and add a user interface into your game environment. Here you can see I'm actually working with a 3D game environment and I'm working with 3D game player prefab. I've already done some pre-setup as far as placing the player character in and also notice that I unpacked the nested pair armature unpack and then I also removed the main camera from the scene. So now I've set up my game environment one of the things you have to be careful of is whenever you're starting to develop in the scripts that I'm going to show you, you may need to actually come in and change as far as the player interactivity goes. So with these three elements already in place here, if we go ahead and check out what I have so far, you can see that I also removed the user interface from the nested parent armature and we have similar controls as normal. So now I'm ready to begin working on and developing my project. So under the edit drop down menu, so under the edit drop down menu, what we're going to want to locate is specifically working with the project settings. Into the project settings for the player, you're going to have to make a specific setting here. Now I'm going to stay on PC, Mac, and Linux standalone since that's really all I'm working with. But if you scroll down, you're going to see an option here called Active Input Handling. You're going to want to change this over to both. By default, when you make a new Unity project, it wants to set to new. When you set it to both, you may get a pop-up from Unity saying, are you sure? Tell it yes, and it's going to, it may refresh the actual user interface. But once you've done that, you're now ready to begin actually working on your user interface and adding a little bit more interactivity for your user as far as the overall layout and design of your project. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the hierarchy and under UI, I'm going to add a canvas. Now, a couple of notes on the canvas though. The canvas is the default container for all the different UI elements. So even though you can see that I have all these different elements here, even if I were to select one of those individually, by default, it's going to put the canvas onto the, onto the overall hierarchy here. So normally what I do is I just start with the canvas since it's going to add it anyways. Notice too, it also added an additional item called the event system that can act as a container for scripts that can be later used by UI elements. And we will be using that actually whenever we get into our button. Now, Another thing to point out too, as far as the layout for the hierarchy and what we did here, is it can be a little throwing for people as far as working in a 3D environment, but your UI is actually 2D. So what you may want to do is up at the top in the scene panel there, there's an option called 2D. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that and then double click on the canvas so that I can see the canvas. So long as I'm working on my canvas, I'm going to stay in 2D mode. You'll just have to remember to switch back to 3D if you want to do actual environment editing. Now coming over to the canvas scaler here, you can see UI scale mode is to constant pixel size. I actually like to change this. I like to change this so that it's scalable since I'm not sure what type of user resolution my player is going to be using. So normally under the canvas scaler in the inspector, I change it to scale with the screen. So now I'm actually ready to come back under the canvas and let's go ahead and add a UI element and let's add in a button. The reason we're going to start with the button is whenever you want to actually start working and publishing your games, we're going to have to have a way for a user to get out of the game, which is why we're going to call this quit BTN. Now, just like other objects in the Unity environment, I'm going to go ahead, I can move it around the UI area and just place it where I want it. Um, so in this case, I'll put it down in the corner here. Now you do have options. If you go to the inspector, you can change your source image, color, you can add materials onto your buttons, but also you have some default colors. If you do nothing else, I would strongly encourage you work with the highlighted color. This is going to be a way to let your user know that the button is interactive. Normally this will highlight whenever the user rolls over the button or places their cursor over the button. So just for demonstration sake, I'm going to go ahead and change this color here because it is pretty subtle. I want it to be pretty apparent that whenever the user hovers, they can interact with it. So now I've set that. 
we can go ahead here and we can continue working with the overall button. But one of the things that you might also want to do here is change your text. And actually the text is a sub-element to the button itself. So you pick the text and then you actually need to type in the text there. So now I have a quick game button in place. It's uh, contained on the canvas. So now if I actually just preview the game without actually interacting with anything, you can now see my buttons popping up down at the bottom there. And the only issue that we really have here as far as whenever we're working with the prefab for the third player character now is as you can see, because I'm using the mouse to look around and control where the player is looking, I can't actually interact with the button. I can't get down to it. Even if I were to escape and try to leave the game, you see when I try to come back in as far as testing, it won't let me interact with it. So the next step now is where the scripts start to come into play and that event system. So one of the first scripts that I have for you is the menu manager script. What this does is it's going to pause the game for you that whenever the key escape is hit, what it'll do is it'll pause the game. However, it's going to make your cursor visible so that your cursor can then move around the environment and actually interact with el different elements there. So specifically our canvas. And the thing is, is once you click on the button, it's going to go ahead and exit the game. Now, with this in mind though, we need to get this script attached onto our button. And we can actually do this with that event system that was added via the canvas when we first added our canvas in. So we're going to go ahead and be able to take this code, attach it to the event system, and then add it onto the button. So these are some of the things that you have to take into consideration. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just click, drag, and drop that menu management onto the event system. And then let's go back to our quit BTN. For the buttons, if you scroll down a little bit, there's an on-click element here. You can actually add a lot of different elements so that when the button is clicked, it's going to do something. So on-click at runtime, it's going to be listening for that event system. And if I assign that event system, I can now actually access my code that's tied onto that and I can get to my quick game function. So I can go ahead and set this up and then I'm ready to go ahead and test. Now, the thing is though, whenever you're working with this event system and we are working with this script, one of the things to be aware of is this script only works with the build. It will not actually function if you preview directly inside. So you are gonna have to go and build your game. Now, as a reminder, you could go and within your folder, you could, uh, as far as your project, I like to make a build folder to contain all of my build stuff. Again, you don't have to if you don't want to. So I'm going to click on build and run. You can see here that it wants to go to that build area there and I'll go ahead and let it. Depending on the size of your game will depend on how long the build can take. So now at this point you see that I can still look around, I still have control, but if I hit the escape key, you see how the game has now paused and I can come over I can interact with the button and I can click quick game. So it did exactly what I asked it to do, but there's one other element that I need to take into consideration as far as the overall game is concerned is notice once again, I'm in the game environment. If my user is playing through the game, I may not want this quit game button constantly present to the user. We can add scripts into the canvas element. And that's where the next little bit of code comes in, where I am making a variable for the canvas called menu system. And what I'm doing is I'm getting the component. And then what I'm doing is through the enabled system, I'm pretty much flip flopping the value as far as true or false is concerned or showing the opposite of. Now, the only thing I'd have to change here is for my canvas in the hierarchy, I need to rechange its name to menu system to match the variable in the code. But once I do that, I can actually drag and drop this code onto the canvas. And what this will do is with the escape key syncing up to my menu management, 
it will give me the capability that I will be able to show and hide the menu system. So again, the biggest change I'm going to have to make here is changing the, the name of the canvas. Could I have technically kept this as canvas? I could have. I like to give it a different name so that whenever I'm working with multiple codes, I can actually keep control and keep track. So I'm going to go ahead and drag show and hide and drop it onto the menu system. And as a reminder, you can double check this by going back over to the inspector. And if you scroll down, there you can see it in your components that it did attach onto the correct element. All right, so now I'm ready to go ahead and test my game one more time and do a build. So it's going to go ahead and build out the game. And this time, however, notice that I no longer have the quit button there. I still have my control over my user or my character. But now when I hit escape, you see how the UI pops up and I can actually hit the quit button. So this is just the bare bones basics on how you can go ahead and get a basic interactive UI that will quit out of the game so that whenever your user is testing your game, it's not a matter that they have to hit Alt F4 to quit the game.